I'll have reached the goal I'm dreaming of. War. War never changes. Since the dawn of humankind, when our ancestors first discovered the killing power of rock and bone, blood has been spilled in the name of everything from God to justice to simple psychotic rage. In the year 2077, after millennia of armed conflict, the destructive nature of man could sustain itself no longer. The world was plunged into an abyss of nuclear fire and radiation. But it was not, as some had predicted, the end of the world. Instead, the apocalypse was simply the prologue to another bloody chapter of human history. For man had succeeded in destroying the world. But war... War never changes. In the early days, thousands were spared the horrors of the Holocaust by taking refuge in enormous underground shelters known as vaults. But when they emerged, they had only the hell of the wastes to greet them. All except those in Vault 101. For on that fateful day, when fire rained from the sky, the giant steel door of Vault 101 slid closed and never reopened. It was here you were born. It is here you will die. Because in Vault 101, no one ever enters, and no one ever leaves. Let's see, are you a boy or a girl? It's a boy. A boy? We've got a son, Catherine. A beautiful, healthy baby boy. Oh, oh James. We did it. A son. A beautiful son. You've got a bright future ahead of you, son. I'm sure of it. Look at you. Look at you. Hi there. I'm your daddy, little guy. Daddy. You're going to need a name, aren't you? Your mother and I have been talking. What do you think about... That's a good name, don't you think? Fits you perfectly. Looks like they've finished the gene projection. Let's see what you'll look like when you're all grown up. You're going to look a lot like your dad. See that, Catherine? Oh... <laughs> Oh, very strapping. <laughs> it's a big world out there, son, full of all sorts of people. What about you? What kind of person are you going to be? J You're just James? A... Catherine? James? Catherine! She's in cardiac James. arrest. Start compression. James. Get the baby out of here. Move! Move! One, one thousand. Two, one thousand. Come on. Hang on, Catherine. Hang on. Okay? You one. We need a doctor, not a dead man. Fail to meet my expectations now, and there would be no Don't look straight into the light James and his cheerly charity. Generations, your future the neighbors, right some in this place will feel just like home. Come on over here, son. Come on. Walk to daddy.
There you go. My goodness, just a year old and already walking like a pro. Your mother would have been so proud. Listen, kiddo, I know you don't like it when daddy leaves you alone, but I need you to take care of yourself for a minute. You just stay here while daddy runs to his office. You'll be okay, pal. I'll be back in a bit. Dada. <laughs> you are quite the little explorer, aren't you? Serves me right for trying to pen you in. Come on over here. I want to show you something. See that? It was your mother's favorite passage. It's from the Bible. Revelation 21.6. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. She always loved that. All right, come on. Let's go see if your little friend Amada wants to play. Experiment to prepare. We prepare. Surprise! Stanley, you turned the lights on too fast. You blinded the poor kid. Happy, Happy birthday. birthday! Happy birthday! Can you believe it? He is growing up so fast. Happy birthday, pal. I can't believe you're already ten. I'm so proud of you. If only you. Congratulations, mother. young man. I don't have to tell you how special this day is, do I? Down here in Vault 101, when you turn 10, well, you're ready to take on your first official Vault responsibilities. So here you are. As Overseer, I hereby present to you your very own Pip-Boy 3000. Get used to it. You will be getting your first work assignment tomorrow. <laughs> Enjoy your party. You're only 10 once, so have fun. Oh man, you got a pit boy. I wish I was dead. Happy birthday! We really surprised you, didn't we? <laughs> Your dad was afraid you were on to us. But I told him not to worry. You're so easy to fool. You're welcome. But really, your dad did most of it. I just helped with the decorations and stuff. Hey, I bet you can't guess what I got you for your birthday. Go on, guess. Gross! I didn't think you even liked girls. And you know what I mean, before you say something rude about me. I guess maybe I should give this to someone else. Someone who likes Grognak the Barbarian better than me and Christine. The question is, how could you tell the difference? <laughs> Happy birthday! Happy birthday, Sonny! Enjoying yourself? I hope you appreciate the effort Amara put into this party. She really seems to like you, for some reason. Don't presume too much on her friendship, young man. I'm still the Overseer, and I'm still in charge of this vault and everyone in it. Attention, everyone! It's time to cut the cake! Andy, wait! Oh, no. Nice party. Allow me to wish you a happy birthday. I would offer you a piece of cake, but... Uh... Daddy, so, what I do you think we should call our guy? Act all it's official. Got totally Allow I me know to you wish were you joking, happy but I'm not sure world anyone world. else did it. Who wants to go around all day being called my little world. speech? Sometimes... This party's pretty good, I guess. For a little kid. Balloons. Party hats. Not as cool as my party, though. Remember how my dad got Andy to do magic tricks? And we all played Hunt the Mutant in the atrium? Oh, right. You weren't invited to my party. Too bad, man. It was really fun. Besides, you really that are friend as of yours dumb as you look. A reminder that life is not Come on, all Wally. Fun and you always have good ideas. Hey, uh, thanks for inviting me. Really cool party and everything. I know that, uh... Butch and I give you a hard time, but you don't take that seriously, right? Anyway, uh, happy birthday and everything. I better get back to 
you know. Who do you oh, mean? You know what? You should try it sometime, Daddy. You might like it. Nice party, but now get lost before I'm I have sure to make you cry. Never suspected a thing. Now go on and enjoy yourself. Thanks for coming, Stanley. I know you were busy with the water. How's it going, how smart you are, Wally. Everything's fine, I call hope. Ourselves? Having a good time? Oh, sure. It wasn't easy oh, keeping it a secret. Now up go again on. Last night. I'm yeah. sure everyone else would like a chance to talk to the birthday. Well, at least it doesn't have your name in it somewhere. Are you having a nice time? How do you like that Pip-Boy, son? Fit all right and everything? Don't mention it. Oh, yes, I almost forgot. Happy birthday! Not much, but I hope you like it. Other ideas. How are you enjoying the party, Come on, Mrs. You guys Palmer? can do better than I that. Have the you need a good name. You know. Um, are you having a nice party? Ten years old. My, my, my. Seems like only yesterday that your daddy came. Goodness, listen to me ramble. You're waiting for your present, aren't you? Fiddlesticks. What ten-year-old doesn't like presents? I was ten once, believe it or not. My goodness, the vault was practically crowded back then. Not like today. So few young people now. But here I am rambling on again, and you listening so politely. Here you go. A nice sweet roll that I baked for you just this morning. And it's all for you. No sharing required today. I'm hungry, and that stupid robot destroyed the cake. Give me that sweet roll you got from old lady Palmer. How about we share it? What are you, five? Give me that sweet roll, I'm gonna pound you. Oh, yeah? We'll see about that. I'm well, glad on his way to becoming a productive vault citizen. <laughs> Butch, what do you think you're doing? Leave him alone. You all right, son? Jonas? He didn't hurt hey, you, Doc. We're all set down here. I hope Butch didn't hurt you. You want to tell me what that was all about? That's fine, son. I'm glad to see you're not letting Butch bully you. He's going to be a handful in a few years if his mother doesn't take him in hand. Well, no harm done then. Why don't you get back to enjoying your party? Thanks. I'll send him right down. Hey, that was Jonas on the intercom. He and I have been cooking up a little surprise present. Jonas is waiting for you downstairs on the reactor level. Go ahead. I don't think anyone will mind if you slip out for a few minutes. Maybe... Happy birthday, dearie. My goodness, I hope I didn't miss the party. They sure did. My, my. Ten years old already? Why, I can remember helping your dad change your diapers. And now look at you, a great big grown-up ten-year-old with your very own Pip-Boy. Since this was such a special occasion, do you know what I did? I wrote you a poem just for you. I hope you like it. Of course. Run along now, dearie, and have yourself a wonderful birthday. Enjoy the party, sir? Bah! I only showed up because Amata's friends with the brat. Give them a few more minutes, and then I want that place cleaned up and everybody back to work. Sure thing, sir. Are you having a nice time? What are you doing down here, young man? I thought kids weren't allowed down on the reactor level. Hey, relax. I was just teasing. Listen, now that you're ten, you don't have to take guff like that from grown-ups anymore. Got it? <laughs> Hold on one more minute. I think your dad will want to give you the surprise himself. Are you ready for your surprise? 
The overseer gave you your pit boy, and you're old enough to do some work, so I figure you're old enough for this. Your own BB gun. It's a little old, but it should work perfectly. Jonas found it down here. It was in pretty rough shape. It took us a good three months to find the parts to get it working again. You know how tough it is to find a spring that small? Good thing Butch misplaced that switchblade of his. <laughs> so, what do you think? Want to give it a try? We sure can't, unless we want the Overseer beating down our door. Jonas and I have found a place, though. Come on. Well, what do you think? You can come down here and shoot anytime you want. You're welcome, pal. Happy birthday. Careful, it's a rad roach. Think you can take care of that with your BB gun? Just aim and shoot. You'll be fine. Good work. That's one less round roach to deal with. Let's get a picture together. Capture the moment. Hey, Jonas, get a picture of me with the big game hunter. Smile. Boys and girls have different parts. What is your problem anyway? So, I'm the overseer's daughter, so what? That like, I get any kind of special treatment. Revelation 21-6. I am Alpha and Omega. Beginning and the end. As far as I can tell, you're a perfectly healthy 16-year-old boy. So yes, you have to go to class to take your GOAT exam. Go on now. You've got a GOAT to take. A generalized occupational aptitude test. GOAT. Everyone here in the vault takes it when they're 16. Helps to figure out what sort of a job you'll have here in Vault 101 when you get a bit older. So. Pay attention and try not to fall asleep. You know what the Overseer says? We are born in the vault, we die in the vault. Each is tested to determine their abilities that they may work for the betterment of all vault residents. Huh. Sound familiar? Hey, it's not my call. Those are the rules. You're 16 now, so this year you take the goat. Come on, it's not so bad. Everyone has to take it. You'll do just fine. That's what the Overseer says, isn't it? He's not about to let anyone else in, so I guess that's how it'll have to be. You're here now, and it's a hell of a lot better than being up there. All your mother and I ever wanted was for you to be safe, and you're safe here. Take care, son. I got out of here, and good luck. Good morning. Stopped in to see the old man before class, eh? Morning, Jonas. Morning, Doc. How's things? Get out of my way, you stupid tunnel snakes! I was just going over there. I can show you a real tunnel snake, Amata. God, Butch! Why don't you just leave me alone? Let's go into the storeroom, Amata. Go I'll run show and you tell your daddy on us? She thinks she's better than us. Get these idiots the away from me! Daddy's girl gonna cry? Daddy's girl, daddy's girl. Ba Tunnel snakes rule! Can't think of anything. Butch says this little bitch is blabbing to her daddy about us tunnel snakes. We can't have that. Because we're the tunnel snakes, and we rule! That's us, and we rule! No one messes with the tunnel snakes. Or they have to answer to Butch and Wally. You don't want to be on their bad sides. Trust me. None of your business. Because Butch said so. And what Butch says goes. Tunnel snakes rule! Because he's my pal. My brother. All us tunnel snakes are brothers. Birth to earth. Womb to tomb. Mostly because tunnel snakes rule! Let's go into the storeroom, Amada. I'll show you a good time. Help! Stupid tunnel snakes! Immature assholes, if you ask me! 
Why won't they leave me alone? It's not my fault my father's the overseer. I don't care about their stupid gang. Can you talk to them? Maybe Butch will listen to you. Please? Thanks. You've always been a good friend. Try talking to Butch. They'll all do whatever he says. I can show you a re- Yeah? What do you want? Damn right. And you'll stay out of our way if you know what's good for you. No one messes with the tunnel snakes. Especially not this stuck-up little daddy's girl. Did you know? Evolve Tech Robco Partnership is considered... Maybe you're right. We can deal with her later. Come on, tunnel snakes. This little bitch isn't worth our time. Whatever you say, Butch. You're the boss. Tunnel snakes rule. Fine. Let's go. Hey, Susie. What's new? Thanks for getting rid of them. <sighs> Assholes. I don't know why they won't leave me alone. Just because my father is the overseer, I guess? Idiots. Oh, not much. Our heater's on the fritz again. You're kidding me. Didn't you just get new parts for it last week? Yeah, sure did. But the thing is so old, my grandpa had trouble with it when he was my age. Well, you made it. All set for the goat? Trust me, it really isn't that bad. Just something everybody has to go through. I'm sure you will, especially since it's multiple choice with no wrong answers. We'll start as soon as everyone's found a seat. Good luck. Back off! Well, now that everyone has managed to find the classroom, we can finally get started. No talking, and keep your eyes to yourselves. <laughs> yes, I'm talking to you, Mr. Deloria. Sure thing, Mr. Brach. Unless anyone else has an insightful comment, let's get started. Question one. A frenzied vault scientist runs up to you and yells, I'm going to put my quantum harmonizer in your photonic resonation chamber. What's your response? Question two. While working as an intern in the clinic, a patient with a strange infection in his foot stumbles through the door. The infection is spreading at an alarming rate, but the doctor has stepped out for a while. What do you do? Question three. You discover a young boy lost in the lower levels of the vault. He's hungry and frightened, but also appears to be in possession of stolen property. What do you do? Question five. Your grandmother invites you to tea, but you're surprised when she gives you a pistol and orders you to kill another vault resident. What do you do? Question six. Old Mr. Abernathy has locked himself in his quarters again, and you've been ordered to get him out. How do you proceed? Question seven. Oh no. You've been exposed to radiation, and a mutated hand has grown out of your stomach. What's the best course of treatment? Question 9. You decide it would be fun to play a prank on your father. You enter his private restroom when no one is looking, and... Question 10. Who is indisputably the most important person in Vault 101? He who shelters us from the harshness of the atomic wasteland, and to whom we owe everything we have, including our lives. Pencils down, people. That's it. The infamous goat. I'm sure most of you didn't find it so bad. Others, well, there are always openings in the maintenance department. Don't forget to hand in your test before you leave. You don't want to know what happens to people who fail the goat. You can have the rest of the day off to celebrate or to pray, as the situation warrants. Here you are, Mr. Brach. I hope I did okay. Nothing for you to worry about, Miss Almodovar. Let's see. Very well done. Looks like it's the supervisory track for you. Thanks. See you tomorrow. Yo, teach! I'm done! 
Ah, Butch. Can I admit that I've been waiting for this day for a long, long time? Allow me to savor the moment. Now then, let's see. Hmm. Really? Interesting. You surprised me, Butch. I didn't think you had it in you. Hairdresser! Who would have thunk it? You're so full of it. That isn't true. Good to see you. All finished? Looks like the diner's going to get a new fry cook. I'll just say this once. Hold the mustard, extra pickles. <laughs> Yes, um, it's refreshing to see such, uh, youthful enthusiasm. Good to know that the goat occasionally gets it right. You know what they say about monkeys and typewriters. Well, I'm glad things turned out so well for you. I hope your classmates find their results half as satisfying. I'm all done, Mr. Brotch. I guess. Uh, wait a second. Can I have it back? I think I need to change one of my answers. Just calm down a minute, Paul. I'm sure you have nothing to worry about. Let's see. Hmm. Hmm. Snake Bye. life forever! Hey there. Hey there. I'll see you tomorrow, bright and early. Anything is possible, even an egg. That is the problem. He is safe now. Is he going to get back to work? Selfish and insolent. Look, just wake up! You Come need on, to wake know up! These things. I'm not going to be around to hold your hand forever. Come on! You've got to wake up! He's left the vault! I don't know how, but he's gone, and my father, he's kind of gone crazy. It's Jonas! They killed him! My father's men! They took him and. Oh my god, you have to leave now! Yeah, it's lucky I got here ahead of them, but we can't stand here talking. You've got to get out of here. Not anymore, apparently. But are you honestly telling me you had no idea your dad was leaving? He really didn't tell you? Oh, I'm sorry. I I'm sure he had his reasons. Maybe Jonas was supposed to explain everything to you? But it doesn't matter. I can help you escape. I have my own plan. Listen, there's a secret tunnel that leads directly from my father's office to the exit. You'll have to hack the computer in his office to open it. Use these to get into his office. That's how I always get in. Oh, one more thing. I stole my father's pistol. I hope you won't need it, but you'd better take it just in case. Okay, I'll try to meet you at the exit. Watch out for security. Good luck! There he is. Hold it right there! Christ, more rope! That's... Get off me! to help me my mom's trapped in there with the rat roaches no I can't go back in there it's it's dark and there's rat roaches oh my god thank you I didn't know what to do you are the best I've ever had, man. Hey, I know it isn't much, but I want you to have my Tunnel Snake's jacket. Go ahead, take it.
something on my shoe. Oh, you're lucky it was me who found you. The others won't be so forgiving. I don't know what you're up to, and I, I don't want to know. Just, just clear out of here, and I'll pretend I never saw you. It's a real shame it's come to this. I can't believe what they did to Jonas. Officer Mack was just out of control. But you're a good kid. You didn't do anything to deserve this. Go find your dad if you can. A little peace and quiet at last. Ah, young sir. How very good to see you. I do so. You're the one everybody's looking for, right? It's none of my business. Your dad always took good care of us. I believe he's gone topside. Just hold still. Your left stabilizer's been knocked loose. Turning like that, I'm gonna crack your casing. Let's go back to our quarters. It's our only chance, don't you see? We're getting out of here, just like the doctor. I'm not gonna let anyone stop us. It's me! Tom! Be careful! I knew you'd turn up sooner or later. Had enough? That's more where that came from! You! This is your fault! You and your stupid father! He had to go and leave, didn't he? He had to mess things up for everybody. I told you, I don't know anything. Be reasonable, Amon. Oh. Gotcha now. Hold it right there. The overseer's gonna hear about this. I'm hit! You shouldn't have tried to run. Oh! Oh! Your father uh. trained us all! My god, what have you done? You killed him! Why would you kill my father? Good, you're leaving. I guess you were trying to help me, but you... You didn't have to kill him!
So you say. Maybe one day I'll be able to forgive you. But not now. I hope you never have to find out what it's like to see your father killed right in front of you. No! Don't listen to me. Just, just go! Find your father! I have to go bury mine! You'd better leave before I change my mind about letting you go. Stop! In the name of the Overseer! Uh, oh! You like that, you bastard? Another newcomer. Name's Lucas Sims, town sheriff, and mayor too, when the need arises. I don't know why, but I like you, boy. Something tells me you're all right. So welcome to Megaton. Just holler if you need something. Friendly and well-mannered. I think we're gonna get along just fine. You treat my people nice, and you're welcome to stay as long as you'd like. God, I hope you ain't one of those psychotic quiet types. So, is there anything else I can do for you? Nope, sorry. I got enough fires to put out in this place that I don't have time to keep tabs on every visitor. I'd ask around town. You're looking to trade, stranger? Check out Craterside Supply. Staying out of trouble, I hope. Don't want to have to waste good bullets on your sorry hide. What do you want to know? The town's named after the bomb that's sitting in the middle of it. It hasn't gone off yet. I don't trust any of the locals to tinker with it. Besides, most people don't even realize it's still a threat. And hell, Cromwell and those crazies from the Church of Adam, they worship the damn thing. Why? You think you got the know-how to disarm it? For good? Oh, all right. Fine. But listen here, just take a look at it first. Go easy. If you get the job done, there'll be 100 caps in it for you. Great. Go ahead and see what you can do. Just be careful. I urge... Now I know I've never seen you in Megaton before. Well, let me guess. Just passing through, right? We get people trying to settle down here all the time. Anyway, if you're hungry, you came to the right place. What can I get you? Oh man, you're looking for your dad? That is so sweet. Did he run out on you when you were a kid or something? Our parents died when we were kids. My brother Leo, he's the oldest. He raised my brother Andy and me. It was hard on him, but we turned out okay. But God, you don't want to hear about that. I'm sorry. But I haven't seen your dad. He didn't eat at the Brass Lantern. I'd remember if he did. Come, drink with me and pray. Glorious Atom, I give unto you these feeble bones. I present to your will this frail body. I beg of you to use me as your vessel. Guide me to your brilliance. Divide each particle and give relief to this rotten flesh. Cast the fragile thought. Who have we here? Could it be? A new addition to our humble little community? Dear child, welcome. Welcome to Megaton. I am Confessor Cromwell, 
prophet of atom and father of the undying glow. Please, child, come to the church any time, any time at all. Many of the transient visitors end up at one of Megaton's seedier establishments. I suggest you speak to Colin Moriarty and continue your search there. Hey there. Behold! <laughs> Sorry, he now. is coming with the clouds, and every eye shall be blind. Ah, come on, you piece of junk. Every day it's the same damn thing. I told you, Gob, it ain't the radio. The Enclave station comes in fine. It's Galaxy News. Their signal's been shit lately. Work. Hey there. Come on, work. My, my. Just when I had all but given up hope. My dear boy, I'm very happy to make your acquaintance. I am Mr. Burke. And you, well, you are not a resident of this putrescent cesspool. And makes you a rather valuable individual. Finally, someone with a modicum of civility and common sense. I represent certain interests, and those interests view this town, this megaton, as a blight on a burgeoning urban landscape. You have no connections here, no interest in this cesspool's affairs or fate. You could assist us in erasing this little accident off the map. No, no. I'm merely a recruiter. You get to have the real fun. The undetonated atomic bomb for which this town is named is still very much alive. All it needs is a little motivation. I have in my possession a fusion pulse charge. Once rigged to the bomb, it will be detonated by you at a secure location. Easy money, my friend. Sims is an idiot. He prides himself on his position as mayor and sheriff of this scrapyard. You mean, besides doing the world a favor by removing this pestilent scab of a town? Why, you'd be rewarded most handsomely. My employer is a very generous man. If it's bottle caps and luxury you're seeking, you shall have it. Well played. An extra 500 caps, in addition to the base fee when Megaton lies in ruins. Here's the fusion pulse charge. Place it in the bomb. When it's done, meet me at Tenpenny Tower. It's southwest of here, well out of harm's way. You can't miss it. Any questions? Absolutely not. The place, the people, they're one and the same. Sacrifices for a nobler future. I assure you, they're worth ten times as much in death as they are in life. A Wait, traveler, eh? Is that... Damn it. Stupid real. Watch it, will you? Bitch. Just I... give it up, oh. God. Can I do for oh. you, Daddy? Oh. Do you want something, or are you just looking to get your ass beat? What's the matter? Never seen a good Colin Moriarty, at your service. Welcome to Moriarty's. My saloon, my home, my slice of heaven in this backwoods little burg. If you've got the caps, I've got your pleasure. Please sit down, make yourself comfortable. Your troubles are a thing of the past. My God, it's you. The little baby boy all grown up. Persistent little bastard, ain't you? 
Then and now, it would seem. It's been a long time, kid. Oh, your daddy passed through here all right. Here and gone. Got what he came for and then left. I I'm assuming you'll do the same, correct? Is that what your father told you? That you were born in that hole? That he was born there as well? Oh, the lies we tell to those we love. Your father brought you to the vault right after you were born. To keep you safe, you see. I remember it well, you stayed in my saloon after all. That's right. Your father, his brotherhood a steel friend, and you, the suckling babe with nary a tit to suckle. Sorry about your mom, truly. Ah, but life goes on. Daddy lied. Life's full of little disappointments. And now you're all grown up and wondering where he's gone to. Ah, I see. You know, I heard about the brainwashing that goes on down there. From some other fella, escaped. Oh, five years back. All hail the overseer, we're born in the vault, we die in the vault, and all that other assorted lunacy. Kid, you've got better programming than our own deputy weld. you best wise up quick. Wouldn't want anyone taking advantage of you, hmm? You seem like a nice kid, so I'm going to be straight with you. Your dad was here, and now he's not. And yes, I know where he went. But what you're asking me for is information, and information is a commodity. Let's say... A hundred cops. And daddy's location is yours. Very reasonable. All right, kid. Let me help you out. You know, for all time's sake. If you don't have the cops to pay for the information, then maybe you could do a little favor for me. Eager, eh? Good. I like that. It's nice to have a door in this shithole of a town for a change. This junky bitch named Silver borrowed quite a few caps from me. Claimed she could start funneling Jet and Psycho to me for a good price. Problem is, she scrammed with the loot and set herself up in Springvale so she can inject herself into a stupor. Get the caps she owes me and they're yours. Yours to pay me with, anyway. <laughs> well, before. Hell of a day, isn't it? And back he comes. So, are you just thirsty, or are you ready to pay me fee? Dear Dad's not gonna find himself. Galaxy News Radio is some loudmouth radio station located in the ruins of D.C. Three Dog, the king of that loony bin, keeps yapping about fighting some good fight or something. A bunch of crap. But I suppose if you wanted to know what was going on in the wasteland, that's the place to go. Me, I could care less. The wasteland? Why the hell would you want to go out there? Listen to me, lad. Megaton has everything you could possibly need. Why go anywhere else? I own a saloon, kid. Rumors are part and parcel. So, I'll give you this one for free. Not sure if you've met her, but Lucy West, that pretty young thing? She's afraid. Of what? Of who? I couldn't say. But you can feel the fear on her. Who the hell are you? Where'd you come from? Did Moriarty send you? That bastard. He's a... He's a liar! He just wants me dead. Those caps are all mine. I earned them. Look, I don't know who you are. I'm not just handing over my life's earnings to you. This is Look. I feel awful about what I used to have to do for a living, okay? I used the psycho to make the memories go away. Who the hell are you to judge me? Tell Moriarty he can take his fucking caps and shove them up his ass!
You'd do that for me? I never expected anyone to care enough. Here you go. Thanks, kid. You're all right. What's it to be? A few caps to find out where your father went? Or are you going to have a go of it on your own? Well, the wasteland can be such an unforgiving place. Good. I hope she got what she deserved. You took care of our little lost lamb, eh? I knew I could count on you. How about you just hand over a hundred caps and we'll call it even? Now that wasn't so difficult, was it? Your dad came through here all right. Didn't stay long, though. Said he had some important business to attend to and headed off to the city. Something to do with Galaxy News Radio. Guess that'd be the place for you to start. Good hunting, and thanks for the caps. It's like I said, kid. Your dad was here for a bit but didn't stay long. Said he was going to the Galaxy News Radio Station, southeast in D.C. If it isn't the little saint from the vault, we've been looking for you. Someone's put quite a price on your head. What? You think you can walk around the wasteland doing the things that you do and there isn't going to be someone who takes notice? Such a shame. I hear that you could have been something useful. Ah well, time to die. No, no, I don't think so. Security protocol initializing.
try and hide from this! No offense, but I'm a little busy saving your ass right now. You don't need to worry. We're the best outfit in the whole Brotherhood of Steel. Just watch what we do to these uglies. Look, I don't know who you are, but you don't belong here. The Super Mutants have overrun our brothers at the Galaxy News Radio Building, and we're headed there to back them up. You can tag along if you want, but keep your head down and try not to do anything stupid. You've been living under a rock? This is DC. The entire city is crawling with super mutants. Now if you'll excuse me. There aren't a lot of safe places in the ruins right now. But the Galaxy News Radio Building is sort of our port in the storm. Unfortunately, the building's been hit pretty hard lately. We're their backup. So if there are no more questions, we really need to move out. That's a negative. We've got too many local conscripts as it is. Most are undertrained and too damn trigger-happy for their own good. Our very own Initiate Redden is a sterling example. The name's Sarah Lyons, Sentinel and Squad Commander of the Lyons Pride. We're with the Brotherhood of Steel. We do our best to hold back the super mutants in this area, but when civilians stumble into our sights, that gets a bit difficult, doesn't it? New recruit? Just a stray we picked up, the one that blundered into the uglies over on 42nd. Welcome! All right, it's the usual drill. Redden, you just do whatever Paladin Vark... stays closed until we finish securing the perimeter. Fault, Vargas. Redden was good enough for the pride, and she proved it here today. 
Yeah, I know. Looks like it's all clear. Unlocking outer doors. Knight Finley at your service. What can I do for you? This is Galaxy News Radio, the last free voice of the people of the Wasteland. The Brotherhood of Steel makes sure of that. Oh, go right on up. You were expected. The look on your face says it all. You're wondering who the heck this guy is and why you should care. Well, prepare to be enlightened. I am Three Dog, jockey of discs and teller of truths, lord and master over the finest radio station to grace the wastes, Galaxy News Radio. And you, well, I know who you are. Heard about you leaving that vault, traveling the unknown, just like dear old Dan, huh? Met him already. Hey, hey, one thing at a time. Nah, your old man ain't here. Not anymore. He heard old Three Dog on the radio. Figured I knew what was what out here in the Capital Wasteland. And he was right. So I filled the old man in. But he split. Looks like I've got my way of contributing to the good fight, and he's got his own. Imagine a picture, okay? A picture of the Capital Wasteland. All that brick and rock. A whole lot of nothing, right? There's people out there trying to just barely make it from day to day. Fighting to stay alive and make something out of what they got. But then you've got all kinds of shit. Slavers, super mutants, raiders. They all want a slice of the pie, too. And aim to take it by force. They can't, not against those kind of enemies. They just run away and hide, or they stay and die. It just ain't right. So that's where I enter the picture. I fight the good fight with GNR as my gun. The sound of truth goes out across the Capital Wasteland. Hell, someone's got to counter that bullshit on the Enclave Station. Oh, I have plenty of enemies that would love nothing more than to put a bullet between my eyes. The only thing keeping that from happening is Sarah Lyons and the Brotherhood of Steel. We broke it a sweet deal. They keep me from taking a dirt nap, and I keep a strong roof over their head. From what I saw, they were the ones who saved your ass. They keep the ruins super mutant free so people like you can get to people like me in one piece. Without them, we'd be knee deep in muty shit. Sorry, I'm so used to talking to an audience that can't answer, I just assume you want to hear my voice all the time. So, you want to know where your dad is? Fair enough. We got one rule in the good fight though. You want help, you gotta contribute. I have the name and the talent, but what I don't have are people to run out and do the stuff I need. Sure, the Brotherhood watches over the place, yeah, but that's all they can spare. Galaxy News needs a doer, someone who can go out there into that wild, woolly world and get shit done. So you game? You wanna find your dad. And it just so happens, his location is known to yours truly. He was here, at Galaxy News. We had a great conversation. He's a real stand-up guy. If you want to know more, you're going to have to contribute to the good fight.
Good, because this isn't going to be easy. Galaxy News Radio is my baby. I love it. I feed it. I keep it changed. But there's one problem. No one outside of DC can hear her cry. You see, some brainless super mutant thought it would be funny to shoot at the shiny round thing on the Washington Monument. Yep, that shiny thing was our broadcast relay. Now it's Swiss cheese. Without it, our broadcast range is quite limited. Of course, the factory that made the relay dishes is long gone, leveled. As in, we're never gonna scavenge that part again. It is risky. I would never lie to you. But there's something behind those eyes of yours that screams, I'm the one that can get shit done. Your dad had that same look in his eyes, too. That's why three dogs helping you. One of the Brotherhood guys that passed through here mentioned seeing a dish in one of DC's old museums. It's the dish off the old Virgo 2 lunar lander in the Museum of Technology. I want you to get it, and bring it to the Washington Monument to replace the bad one. That's it. Hee <laughs> hee! I sure know how to pick them. You're going to be the best thing that ever happened to Galaxy News in a long time. If you need any more info, I'll be here waiting for you.
best technology. Triple-S technology is vault Tech's convergence of the three most important parts of apocalyptic endurance. Safety, survivability, and sanitation. Underground, coming down. cameras enable the vault's leader to watch your every move. You'll never be alone again. Should the unlikely event arise. For as long as history has been recorded, man has had an insatiable hunger for knowledge regarding the universe. To understand why man is so Galaxy News owes us big for this one. Smooth move. Hey, all right! The hero of the wasteland returns. Hey, you're the one that deserves all the thanks. You struck a major blow against tyranny. Now, GNR can be heard clear across the capital wasteland again. That'll give Eden and those muties something to think about. But before I get back to my calling, I bet you want to hear about your dad. When your dad passed through here, he and I talked for a good long time. He's a real stand-up kind of guy. He mentioned some scientific mumbo-jumbo, which didn't make sense to me and mentioned something called Project Purity. He also said something about going to visit a Dr. Lee in Rivet City. Then he left in a hurry. You never heard of Rivet City? Wow! 
just... Wow. Well, a whole bunch of people got together and turned a beached aircraft carrier into a town. Pretty cool, huh? Just follow the river south from here. There's no way you can miss it. Another human with a death wish. Welcome to the mall, tourist. Those knuckle-draggers? Nah, they don't bother us ghouls. Maybe they see us as kin or something, I don't know. Now there's other assholes. Yeah, you know, those humans like you. Well, maybe not like you, I don't know, but humans all the same. The Brotherhood of Steel guys with their testosterone and power armor. Those psycho talon company mercs. Those other assholes. Nice to meet you too. I'm the sentry for Underworld. City of ghouls. Inside the museum. For a tourist, you're pretty clueless. My name's Willow, by the way. Come on, here you are in the mall of our nation's fine capital, taking in the sights, visiting the monuments. Face it, you're a tourist. Thank <laughs> you. 
Please, I'm dying. I need water. Can you help me? I need water. Purified water, please. I've been drinking whatever I can find, but I can't do it anymore. I need purified water. Please. If you find any... Welcome to Rivet City. Please wait while the bridge extends. Hold it right there. State your business in Rivet City. And who might your father be? If he lives on this boat, I know him. Dr. Lee, eh? Well, then I guess you'd have to ask Dr. Lee for more information. Go on up, then. She's probably in the science lab. But keep your nose clean, you hear me? We're the safest, most secure city in the wasteland. Nothing can get in here without our say-so. Let me or a security officer know if you see anything out of the ordinary. center in the capital wasteland, I find your... Look, Dr. Zimmer, we've been over this. We don't know about your runaway robot, and we don't care. This lab is dedicated to solving real problems. Yes, yes, yes. But Dr. Lee... Dr. Lee is trying to save lives, and your constant interruptions are interfering with those efforts. Now please, stand aside. I'm sure the good doctor's work with water purification is fascinating. But if you only knew what was at stake, the technology in that android... What's at stake? You won't tell me what's at stake. Vagaries and secrecy, a robot's a robot, Zimmer, no matter how shiny the paint job. Now, please. Ignorance and facetiousness. That's all you people are good for. Shiny paint job, indeed. You can't even imagine the Commonwealth's accomplishments. You know, if you're so smart, maybe you could help us, hmm? But no, that never even crossed your mind. Go peddle your selfishness somewhere else. Fine, but I'm not leaving. Not until I've spoken to Dr. Lee. I'll be here when she's ready to abandon her chemistry set and talk real science. Suit yourself. Look, this is a restricted area. I'm tired of telling you people. I... It's you. My heavens, you look so much like him. You're James's son, aren't you? What are you doing here? You were too young to remember, and I suppose James never spoke of me. Typical. I am Dr. Madison Lee. I worked with your parents many years ago. Now, I run the science lab here in Rivet City. It was all I had left. When your mother died, your father decided to leave with you. He abandoned our work. We had no choice but to do the same. Project Purity, we called it. What do you want to know? You happened. It wasn't just you. We had more problems than we could handle already, but your birth is what finally pushed it over the edge. Your father decided that you were more important than everything we'd been working for, and he left. He left all of us. Once he was gone, the Brotherhood decided we weren't worth their time anymore. Without their protection, we had to abandon the purifier. We had the basic principles down, we understood most of the science behind it, but the radiation in the area is so pervasive. Small-scale tests were fine, but any time we tried to test the process on a larger scale, it was just... too much. Maybe if we'd had more time, or better equipment. 
Okay. You mean you haven't? I assumed he sent you here. For that matter, aren't you supposed to be in a vault? James said he left you there. Did you? I was under the impression that's exactly the opposite of what he wanted for you. Well, you won't find him here. He's come and gone already. Your father insisted that we return to work on Project Purity. I tried telling him too much time has passed. There's no way it would work. Predictably, he refused to listen to me. He says he can prove it will work and head it off to the old lab. I'm sorry, I don't know what else to tell you. It's in the old Jefferson Memorial Building, northwest of here. Please, don't go after him. It was foolish of him to even think about going there alone. I suppose so. I worked with them for several years until... until your mother died and your father decided it was time to leave. What else do you want to know? Complications from childbirth. None of us were expecting it. We weren't as prepared as we could have been. You have to understand, we were struggling with scavenged, derelict equipment. We did everything we could. Yes, well, uh, I'm sorry it wasn't enough. Yes. Your mother was... Well, she was a good woman. A very dedicated scientist. Your father loved her very much. It was a shame that she died. She had been excited to meet you. James? He was very driven. Determined to change the world. <laughs> well, we all were back then, I suppose. He was focused on two things, really. Making Project Purity work, and your mother. When she died, I think... I think he gave up. I know he wanted to keep you safe, but I think part of what he did was run away. But it seems that he never really was able to get over the idea. I'm frankly shocked that he waited all this time and wants to try again.
more games! Time to oh. die! Vault 112, resident. According to sensors, you have arrived 202.3 years behind schedule. Please redress in your Vault Tech issued Vault suit before proceeding. If you have misplaced your suit, I am authorized to distribute a new one. Once dressed, please proceed down the stairs to the main floor so that you may enter your assigned Tranquility Lounger. A Tranquility Lounger is available. Please be seated. Young hey there, sport. Beautiful day, isn't it? Say, you should go talk to Betty. She's waiting for you over on the playground. Have fun, sport. Oh, someone new to play with. What good luck I have lately. I was just starting to get bored. Oh, we're going to have so much fun. Gee, I don't know. What's he like? <laughs> That's your daddy? Oh, we're going to have so much fun. This is going to be the best game ever. 
you would. It's a really simple game. All you have to do is make Timmy Newsbum cry. It'll be funny. Come on, you'll see. Make him cry and then come back here and we'll talk some more. There, I'm Timmy. Wanna play? Your dad? Nope, I haven't. Did he get lost? You're a big dumb liar. Hi, wanna play? Okay, I guess. I don't really have nobody to play with, except for Betty, and she's kind of, well, she's mean. What? No, she didn't. Did she? I don't like her. She's creepy, and she laughs at stuff that isn't funny. What? You're weird. Good day. You, you don't belong here. You're not supposed to be here. It's not real, none of it. It needs to end. The suffering must end. We're not really here. We're not really talking. It's all made up, make believe. We're sleeping, dreaming. The dream became a nightmare. It has to end, it just has to. But we're not in charge, he is. And he doesn't want us to wake up. He calls himself Betty now, but he's still the same. He can put on a new face all he likes, but underneath he's still evil. Braun. Bastard thinks because he helped create this place he's God here. But I know he still uses the fail-safe terminal. I know it. It's in the abandoned house. He doesn't want us going in there because he's afraid we might find it. It's the only terminal to the outside. The only way to shut the whole thing down. You've got to find it. Mabel, I meant to ask you. Good day. Have you seen Hello? What can I do for you, sport? Betty? Well, she's Betty, you know. You really shouldn't keep her waiting. Bobco Hello. Catalog? You sure showed him, didn't you? I suppose it wasn't the most cerebral way to deal with the situation, but it was definitely effective. Consider the game won. And with that, you win a prize. Your prize is one question which I will answer to the best of my ability. Ah, yes. A predictable question, I suppose. Your father is here in Tranquility Lane. He is quite safe for now, though he can no longer hound me with his incessant questioning. Perhaps you will see more of him in time. Were I you, I'd be more concerned with myself at the moment. And besides, we're done with questions for now. Perhaps we'll address it at a later time. First, I have something else for you to do. Pay a visit to the Rockwells. They're very happily married. And I'd like you to change that. Put an end to their marriage. And we'll talk. Rationalize it any way you'd like. If you succeed, we'll continue our discussion. Hello. Good day to you. Well, they're just so nice, aren't they? It's good the two of them worked everything out. Oh, I... well, I'm not one to talk, but there was that fight last year. Everyone could hear them arguing. Janet thought there was something going on with Roger and Martha Simpson. He eventually convinced her it wasn't true. But I've seen the way Martha looks at him. 
Janet may believe him, but I sure don't. Tip? Oh, I wouldn't call it that. Just something I heard is all. Bye-bye! Well, hi there. Why are you asking me? I don't know anything. And why should I care about their marriage anyway? There's no story. Never was. Roger and I... Nothing ever happened. I wanted... Oh, I don't know. I thought there was something between us. No, that's not true. I, I know there was. But Roger pushed me away. Tried to deny it. Even Janet knew it was there. She fought with him over it. I think she still suspects something. I try to stay away from Roger, just to avoid giving her a reason to hate me more. Hello. Good day to you. Good day. Good day to you. Now see here. That's not anything for you to be asking about. Our marriage is our business and it's private. Why can't people just understand that and just leave us alone? Good day to you. I don't know what sort of thing you'd want to hear about. There was that one time Janet waved a rolling pin at Martha. Oh, but I suppose that's not really something you should concern yourself with. All in the past now. Hey there, sport. How's it going? Their marriage? Why, that's an odd sort of question. They're like anyone else, I suppose. Got their problems, but they work through them. Janet's a good woman. It's a good thing that Roger came to his senses. Good day. Hiya, kiddo. What's the good word? Now, what's a kid like you want to know about that? Kind of grown-up stuff to be worried about, don't you think? Well, don't you worry your head about it. They worked out their problems a while ago. Haven't heard them fight in a long time. You remember what I told you? The fail-safe. You've got to find it! Did you look? Did you really look? You can't just look with your eyes, you know. You think he really looks like that little girl? He hides things, confuses them. You have to find a way to find it. Remember what I told you. The f The abandoned house keeps that one to himself, he does. That's where it is. That's why he doesn't want us in there. Well, hi there. What a horrible thing to say. Is that your idea of a joke? Our marriage? Oh, goodness. What kind of a question is that? Mabel didn't put you up to this, did she? What a silly thing to ask about. Well, hi there! Now that's not funny. Not one bit. Good day to you. What were you doing in our basement? What's down there? Okay, if you say so. clothing down here what what the hell is this what is this doing here my god I knew it I knew it
How did it come to this? I just don't understand. You have turned out to be quite resourceful, it seems. I am slightly impressed. I enjoy your company far more than your father's. He responded quite negatively to my requests. To the point, aren't we? I've been having so much fun, I see no reason to stop now, huh? Let's try something new, shall we? I'd like you to kill Mabel Henderson. Find an interesting way to do it, please. I'm curious to see how creative you can be. Of course you will. And you never know, you might enjoy it. Oh, come on. Pay more attention. Good day. Well done. Well done. You certainly do get results. You have exceeded my expectations. And now, we come to the last task I have for you. Succeed, and you shall be granted whatever you wish. I think you'll find that I have been quite honest with you thus far. You have no discernible reason to mistrust me. In the doghouse, out behind the abandoned home, are a mask and knife. Don the mask and become the pint-sized slasher. Use the knife to eliminate all the residents of Tranquility Lane. He is a figure of myth, born of old campfire stories. You will make him a reality. The residents will know you and they will fear you. When they have all been eliminated, return to me. Because I can, of course. I have total power here. I may do whatever I wish. And over these many years, I have found that I wish to see others suffer. I am afraid you're not in a position to decide what they do or do not deserve. They are under my control, not yours. Now, if you're done attempting to change my mind, let's get on with your final task. After completing it, you will be free to go.
Oh God, help, help. returns. There's nothing here. Whatever it was, I guess it's gone now. Oh, God. Oh, just getting jumpy. I... Whatever it... Most enjoyable. Most enjoyable indeed. I haven't felt this exhilarated in years. Yes, yes. I suppose you've earned the right to do as you like. I shall miss your company. This has been a simply wonderful time. The door is now open. Through it you may return to the real world. And whatever inferior existence you have there. Son, you've saved me. I was afraid I'd be trapped in there forever. It's so good to see you, but... but what are you doing here? Well, I'm glad you did. This certainly wasn't how I expected things to turn out. I wasn't ready for brawn, or I might have fared better. It certainly is. It's nice to feel that I'm on two legs again. And thanks to Dr. Braun, I know that Project Purity isn't lost after all. I was right about Braun. The technology he developed is unstable, even dangerous. But it can be adapted for Project Purity. I need to return to Rivet City and talk with Madison. If we can find a Gek, we can make Project Purity work. Yes. With what I've learned, Madison is sure to see that we can finally succeed where we failed so many years ago. 
I'd like you to come with me. I'd like you to be there when we finally open the floodgates. That's my boy. Let's hurry. Now that I know what we need, I want to get back to work as soon as possible. It started as an idea, really. Remember the Bible passage your mother loved so much? Free, clean water for everyone. What a difference it could make in the lives of everyone here in the Wastes. Over time, that idea took the form of a purifier. Not like the one in the vault, though. This one was gigantic, capable of purifying millions of gallons of water at once. We used the old Jefferson Memorial for the location, right on DC's Tidal Basin. Someday soon, I hope you'll see it work. In the year before you were born, things became difficult. There had always been something of a mutant problem in the city, but it became worse. They attacked more frequently and more aggressively. Support for the project eroded as time went on, when we couldn't produce any significant results. Progress came to a halt, and then you were born. Your mother and I had talked about what to do when that time came, but then I... we lost her, and I had to make a decision. I chose to leave. From what I understand, things happened quickly after that. It became too dangerous for the others to stay, and so the project was abandoned. Dr. Lee and her team left for what became Rivet City, and Project Purity has sat waiting ever since. I'm sorry, but I am not at liberty to chat right now. What do you need? I'm sorry to hear that. I hope you'll consider meeting me in Rivet City. Is everything all right? Just like shooting that old bloody gun, you remember? For troublemakers, have you seen any? Did you need something? What can I do for you? Rivet City is one of the few bastions of civilization left in the land. We're working to rebuild our society, to make the world livable again. facility at some old pre-war computers that we scavenged. One of them might be useful. From the last reports, there's no power at the facility. Even if one of those computers had a database, we couldn't access it. That's why we're going to head over there right now and get things up and running as best we can. You know, if it were anyone else asking me to do this, I'd have them run right out of Rivet City. You know I wouldn't be here if I didn't think this would really work. It's time, Madison. 
Damn you, James. When this is all over, you owe me a drink. I'll get the team together. Thank you, Madison. It's good to be working with you again. Did you... We need to get back to Project Purity. The computer there is our best chance to locate a Gek. That's my boy. It'll be good to work side by side with you, son. Need something? Is everything all right? I'm not trying to put you off, but we need to get to Project Purity. I'm not trying to put you off, but we need to get to Project Purity. Anything else can wait until later. Hello. Did you need something? I'm not trying to put you off, but we need to get to Project Purity. Anything else can wait until later. Did you need something? Is everything all right? Some people are insane. Did you need something? What can I do for you? I have faith in your father. With the knowledge he's gained, we stand a better chance than we ever have. Some people are in such a hurry. This is kind of exciting, isn't it? I've always heard Dr. Lee talk about Project Purity, but I never thought I'd be going there. Evening. I don't know if I like this. I understand it's important to Dr. Lee, but isn't going to Project Purity dangerous? Did you need... We can't accomplish anything until we can get inside. But none of us are particularly capable fighters. I hate to ask you to put yourself in harm's way, but you seem to have learned to handle yourself. I need you to go in and make sure it's safe for Dr. Lee and her crew. Be careful. Something? Some people are in such a...
Are you all right? Is it safe in there? Excellent. Let's get inside and get to work. Hello. Hey. Hey there. Is everything all right? Good to see you. Hello. something oh great listen I know who you are okay far as I'm concerned you've got no business being here so just stay out of my way Besides the fact that you shouldn't be here, don't touch anything you're not told to. There's enough to do around here without having to clean up after you. The hell do you care? You showed up here, what, five minutes ago, and now you're strutting around like you own the place? You shouldn't even be here. Why don't you go do whatever it is you're supposed to be doing and leave me alone? Here we are, where it all began. You remember your mother's favorite passage? Revelation 21.6 I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. Don't you see? This is what it all means. The water, the purifier, this is the water of life. Your mother's dream. No point in wasting time. Let's get to work. There's much to be done. Did you need some? Here we are. We're at Revelation. No point in... The project was abandoned shortly after you were born. Things have deteriorated here since then. And there's been some flooding. I'll need you to get to the flood control pumps and activate them so we can clear out the water and reach the mainframe. The automatic doors sealed when the flooding occurred, so you'll have to use the access tunnels to reach the pumps. I know there's a lot going on right now. This is all very sudden. I just want you to know that I'm here if you want to talk. You seem troubled, like there's a cloud hanging over you.
I know that you're a good person. Whatever's going on, I know you'll make the best of it. Let's get through this, and I'll help you in whatever way I can. I'm here for you. Right. The flooding shorted out some of the fuse boxes downstairs, including one that controls some of the automatic doors. Here, take these fuses. The box is back down in the sub-basement near the eastern end of the level. Once the fuses are replaced, you'll be able to get to the mainframe. How are you holding up? Need directions? I can't really say since I don't know where you are. You're in the security level. It's full of holding tanks for the water as well as our processing equipment and power systems. the mainframe. No need to come back to the control room. Just head straight there. A few minor repairs still to be made up here in the control room. Why don't you come back here and give me a hand? Actually, wait. There's one other thing I need you to do. Jana says there's a blockage in one of the intake pipes. It's on your way back. Head back up to the museum level and give me a call on the intercom when you get there. Head up to the museum level. Use the door at the north end of the level you're on now.
This facility is now under United States government control. The person in charge is to step forward immediately and turn over all materials related to this project. That's quite impossible. This is a private project. The Enclave has no authority here. I'm going to have to ask you to leave at once. Am I to assume, sir, that you are in charge? Yes, I'm responsible for this project. Then I repeat, sir, that you are hereby instructed to immediately hand over all materials related to the purifier. I'm sorry, but that's... Furthermore, you are to assist Enclave scientists in assuming control of the administration and operation of this facility at once. Colonel, is it Colonel? I'm sorry, but the facility is not operational. It never has been. I'm afraid you're wasting your time here. Sir, this is the last time I am going to repeat myself. Stand down at once and turn over control of this facility. Colonel, I assure you that this facility will not function. We have never been able to successfully replicate test results. I suggest you comply immediately, sir, in order to prevent any more incidents. Are we clear? Yes, Colonel. Do whatever you want. There's no need for more violence. Then you will immediately hand over all materials related to this project and aid us in making it operational at once. Very well. Give me a few moments to bring the system on. James, he's gone. We have to get out of here. They'll be coming for us next. We've got to evacuate now. James, your father caused an overload. He sacrificed himself to keep the Enclave from getting the purifier and to buy us some time to escape. There'll be more of them coming. We need to get out of here before they find us or else your father died in vain. There's an old tunnel that will lead us out of here to someplace safe. We used it as an evacuation route once before, but that was a long time ago. I hope everyone remembers how to get there. There isn't time to round everyone up. Come on, follow me, and hurry! What did you do? Yes? Don't wander off. We're going to need you. This tunnel leads to the Citadel, the Brotherhood of Steel's Fortress. We should be safe there, if we can make it. I don't know what's ahead. That's the problem. No one has used these tunnels in years, but we can't stay put. The Enclave will find us eventually. We have to get moving. We need to keep everyone together, and we need to get through this tunnel as quickly as possible. We're not safe until we reach the other side. You should stay close, and we'll follow behind you. Are you sure? I don't want to stay in one place for too long. it we'll be right behind you be careful watch it
Brotherhood is at your service. Name's Paladin Bale. What do you need, civilian? Of course. But you'd have to secure the permission of Elder Lions and, well, I just don't see that happening. So move along. You're standing in front of the Citadel, headquarters to the Brotherhood of Steel, Capital Wasteland Detachment. Of course. I'm sorry, man. No unauthorized civilians allowed inside the Citadel. You'll have to leave now. Lions! I know you're in there! I know you can hear me! You open this goddamn door right now! We need to escape while we can. Madison, I'm surprised to see you again. What can I do for you? Don't talk down to me, Lyons. I had nowhere else to turn. You must help us. Project Purity has been overrun. Yes, I've heard reports of an incident there. What details can you give us? The Enclave. They've attacked Project Purity. James is dead. There may be more, I don't know. You have to do something. Then it's as we feared. Madison, I'm sorry this happened. I wish we could have done something. Then do something now. They've taken over the Purifier. Lions, they cannot be permitted to have control over it. It's not right. No, no, no. Calm down. You know as well as I do that the purifier doesn't work. It's useless to them. Perhaps it's time to walk away. That's not true. James, he found what's been missing. We know how to get it running. Is that so? Does the Enclave know this? No, I don't think... I don't know. I, I just don't know what's happening anymore. All right, Madison, it'll be okay. Now, this is James's son, I presume? I can see the resemblance. Yes. He knows what we need. vault Tech computer, something to locate equipment. Please help him. Very well. We'll sort this all out. I... I need to rest, lie down or something. This is just too much. Rothschild should help you, but don't forget that he's Brotherhood. I've never trusted them. Be careful what you tell them. Welcome. Hail. Father, might I have a word with you? Yes, my daughter. What is it? I've been talking with the other members of the tribe. We want to assault the Purifier, Father. Now! The Enclave must pay for what they've done. You may be a sentinel, but you're also my daughter. I won't throw your life away fighting an enemy we know too little about. I'm sorry, but no. Yes, but... Yes, Elder. I understand. The Brotherhood is at your service. The Elders sent word of your arrival. I am Scribe Peabody. Welcome, etc. Now, I'm really very busy. Is there something you needed? I'm sure Gunny could train you, but he won't. Not without permission from Elder Lyons. You should ask him. He's usually near the lab. Talk to Scribe Jameson. She is our keeper of the scrolls. She will want to know what you have found. She spends most of her time in the archives. 
You'll find them in A ring near the Great Hall. With my eyes closed. And I will, too. But it will cost you, outsider. Foul, detestable beasts. They're like an infestation. We cut them down and they return again and again. Always so determined to kill or capture. But why? Hail to you. By the traction of hospitality and on the word of Elder Lions, I welcome you to the Citadel. I am Star Paladin Cross, Keeper of the Arm, and Seneschal to Elder Lions. And I am honored to say I was acquainted with your father. Now what may I do to help you? I did, and you as well. Long ago, I helped guard the water purifier against the super mutant horde. When your father left, I escorted the two of you to Megaton. He was... a noble man. I was saddened to hear of his passing. But from what I've heard, he died with honor. He died for you. I only pray that my own death has such meaning. And so, our deeds are carried on, through our sons and our daughters. Continue to remember him fondly. Continue to tell his story. And continue to do his work. Through you, he shall carry on. I have heard tales of your travels, and I must say, they disturb me. I had hoped to fight by the side of the child of my former friend. But until you change your ways, my conscience cannot allow me to do so. Outsiders in the Citadel. Such a pleasure. May I start by saying that I am sorry for your loss. I was acquainted with your father many years ago. The world has lost one of its few remaining visionaries. Think nothing of it. Now, Dr. Lee has explained your predicament. You need to locate some Vault-Tec equipment. Are you quite sure? I suspect that would be a waste of time. Regardless, the Brotherhood is not in possession of such a device. There is, however, a way in which we may be able to ascertain the location of one. Possibly. I'm afraid I won't be able to assist you directly. The news Dr. Lee has brought will require me to be elsewhere. I can, however, give you access to an old pre-war computer from Vault-Tec. It may have the information you need. You'll find the terminal in the archives in the A-Ring. You are welcome. If you require further assistance, I may be able to help. I'm afraid I have other duties to attend to right now. If you find... Typical. Surrounded by the keenest scientific minds in the capital wasteland. But do you thirst for our knowledge? Our experience? No! All you wastelanders want to do is put on that damn power armor and join the ranks of the skull-thumping tin soldiers. So be it. Talk to Elder Lyons. I'm sure he'll grant permission for the training, which our gunnery so... Could I? Yes. Will I? No. Go see Peabody or Bowditch.
The Brotherhood is at your service. Need something, friend? Scribe Rothschild wanted those AMS tests done right away, so I went ahead and handled it for you. The Brotherhood is at your service. You yeah. honor us with your presence here. Did you have any success with that old terminal? Ah, well, that much I believe I can help with. Step over here for a moment. I'll show you where it is. This map shows the locations of all known vaults in the local area. Vault 87 has been highlighted for you. There. Entrance to Vault 87 will be particularly difficult for you, I'm afraid. The area is highly irradiated. Lethal levels are all around the entrance. Gaining direct access will be quite impossible. Quite simply, you don't. To attempt such a thing would be certain death for you. You share your father's determination, it seems. And in this case, you are correct. There may well be another way. Vault 87 is located very close to the site of Lamplight Caverns. It is entirely probable that the vault may be entered from within the caves. No, I'm afraid not. After initial attempts to cross the radiation failed, it was decided to focus our efforts elsewhere. You, however, are free to do as you choose. More exploration may be useful, and I'll certainly be interested in anything you might find. I wish we could do more, but the Brotherhood potentially faces a very pressing, very real threat in the Enclave. All of my efforts must now be devoted to assessing the threat they may pose to us. I'm sure you understand. Hail! Welcome! Initiate, you've got a lot of nerve to interrupt. Oh, my apologies, stranger. I thought you were one of these worthless initiates. I swear, these kids would be lost without me here to powder their asses. That would be me, but that ain't gonna happen. Not unless Elder Lyons himself gives you the all clear. You get permission from the old man and I'll teach you all you need to know. Otherwise, I've got enough brats to babysit. Mister, don't take another step, or we'll blow your fucking head off. You're big, and I don't have any big friends. You better just go out the way you came in. You don't want to go there. That's where the monsters are. We got pretty good at keeping them out. Probably better than you could do. Big ones. You know, the ones that sort of look like people, except they're all wrong.
Yeah, I do. But it's through Little Lamplight, and you're not getting into Little Lamplight. Guess you better find some other way, Mungo. Hell no! No Mungo's allowed! Why should I trust you? I got no reason to. You mongos are nothing but trouble. I ain't gonna let what happened to Sammy and Squirrel happen to anyone else. Them and Penny got themselves caught. By mongos, just like you. Slavers from Paradise Falls. I told them to watch out, but the stupid kids didn't listen. You do that? Maybe. If you can bring them back, I might let you in. You again? I told you to get lost! I guess you're okay after all, Mungo. You can come in, but you better not piss me off. Happy birthday, Sticky. Sorry I missed your party. Yeah, me too. Sorry. There's nothing happy about it. This is the worst day of my life. It's time to go. You know the rules. The rules are stupid. You're a mungo now. You gotta leave. Maybe I can stay just a little longer? Bye, Sticky. Yeah. Bye, Sticky. Don't hey, just stand there. How do Get you do, out pal? of here already. Doing better than a dong in a boneyard. Okay. Bye. See ya about. Wow! What luck! I'm Sticky. Forget these little kids. I'll take you to Big Town where the Mungos, I mean where the grown-ups live. I'm headed there now. Big Town? You've never heard of it? It's where all the grown-ups go. Well, at least when they grow up and out of Little Lamplight. I can show you the way. There's no reason to waste your time with a bunch of snot-nosed kids. Let's go now. I'm not allowed in Little Lamplight anymore. Only people under 18 get to live in Little Lamplight. So when you're done with those little kids, we can go to Big Town together. I'll wait outside for you. Hey, what the hell is RJ thinking, letting a damn mungo like you in here? So who are you working with? Raiders? Slavers? Mutants? Answer up, mungo! Oh, you think Sammy and the rest wouldn't have gotten back on their own eventually? I taught him better than that. Well, if you're sticking around, you ought to know that I'm Princess and I call the shots around here. And don't forget it, Mungo! We don't go there. It's bad back there. Ask Mayor if you really want to know. No, scram! Well, thank goodness you gave me permission. Jerk. Excuse me. Whoa. I've never seen a mungo so close. Are you a raider? Or a slaver? Or a mutant? Because if you are, I'm supposed to go hide. Because I'm too young to use a gun yet. Did you live in the old vault below? I thought nobody lives down there now because it was full of monsters. Mayor doesn't let us go down there because when they went, they didn't come back. You don't look like someone who didn't come back, so maybe you didn't come from there. I don't know. I still get lost sometimes. Things are really big. Watch it! 
Okay, so you get in, but I got my eye on you. You don't make any trouble in here, got it? I ain't having no shit butts making trouble. Good. Better stay that way, Mungo. It's not safe, even for someone as brave as you. There's monsters back there. The big ones. You know, the ones that sort of look like people, except they're all wrong. Yeah, I do. It's through Murder Pass. Not a real safe way to go, but it's the only door that works. It's the only way that works, yeah. The other door hasn't worked since before I was here. Computer's busted and not even Joseph can make it work. I'm the mayor, not a babysitter, Mungo. Beats me. Maybe he's back there by the door. Fuck if I know. You sure about that? It's scary in there. Even I don't like going in there, and I'm really brave. Okay, if you say so. Come on, let's get the gate open for you, Mungo.
I'll try and hide from this! I'll eat your- It was taken from a historical entry in the computer. <laughs> the name comes from a man who was willing to fight and die for what he believed in. I felt it was appropriate, given my circumstances. Because I'm a curiosity, an anomaly. They don't know why I'm different than they are. And I think it fascinates them. All the locked rooms in the medical wing contain failed experiments that they created. Perhaps. I assume you're here to find the Get. I know what it is. I know where it is, and best of all, I know how you can get your hands on it. Because 
You can help me. Let me out of this place. I can't take it anymore. I can't even recall how long I've been here. Take me with you, and I'll retrieve the gek for you. The chamber in which the gek resides is absolutely flooded with radiation. It's unlikely you'd survive very long. Myself, on the other hand, have surprisingly inherited a useful trait from my fellow meta-humans. I am highly resistant to radiation. Let me out of here, and I will place the Gek safely in your hands. At the end of the hallway, to your right is a maintenance room. Inside, you'll find the fire control console for the medical area. Uh, trip the alarm on it, and I'll be able to get out. Oh, a word of warning, though. Tripping the console activates a failsafe and will open all the recovery rooms in the medical area. So, what do you think? Can you do it? Glad to see you are a sensible person. Now, get me out of this place. I can't stand it anymore. Stay here until you've cleared a path to me. So just be careful. Some of these uh, failed experiments are quite nasty. We can discuss this later. Right now, concentrate on getting this door open! Thank you enough for this gift. You have no idea how long I pictured this moment in my mind, and it feels far better than I'd imagined. Now, for my part of the bargain, follow me.
and bring it right back. Keep your eyes open. Many of my lesser-minded brethren are bound to stumble across us. Here's the gack. Our bargain is complete. As promised, yeah, here's the gack. I hope it's worth it. Uh, I'm afraid this is where you and I part company. I'll find my way out of this place. Don't worry. Maybe we'll meet again somewhere in the, the wasteland. Soldier. Make sure the Gek is secured aboard my Vertibird. Yes, sir. I'll have the text come down and remove it immediately, sir. You're certain he's unharmed? Yes, sir. He'll pass out shortly, but we can revive him. Excellent. Prepare him for transport immediately. Right away, sir. So, you're awake. Let's keep this nice and simple. You're going to tell me the code for that purifier, and you're going to tell me now. I'll tell you what's going on here. You lost. The good guys won this one, and now we're just wrapping up loose ends. We've got the purifier, now we just need the code to start it. You're going to give me that code now, and save us all a lot of trouble. Maybe I'll even let you go. So how about it? You know why. We can't start the purifier without it. The longer the purifier isn't running, the more people suffer. Now I'm running out of patience, son. I want that code, and I want it now. You lie! Colonel, I have need of you. Mr. President, I have no time for other matters. I'll be with you shortly. Now, Colonel. Yes, sir. Ah, alone at last. I do apologize for Colonel Autumn's attitude. He's been under a great deal of stress lately. I've no doubt that you know who I am. I'm sure you've heard my radio broadcasts. I'd like to have a word with you face to face. I think there are a few things that you and I should discuss. 
You'll find your possessions in the locker near the door. I'll unlock the way for you. And I'll unlock your restraints as well. I'll be waiting for you in my office. Please don't carry. Hold it right there. You're supposed to be in that holding cell. You're not going anywhere. There's a full complement of guards in the next room. As soon as I get them, you're going back to your cell. In a body bag, if necessary. I'm not listening to anything you have to say, prisoner. Stand down at once! You're not going anywhere. Guards! his progress. to make it. The trip was not what I had intended, but serves as an adequate test of your abilities. What any good politician wants, your continued trust and support. In your case, however, I have more specific things to ask of you, if you'll hear me out. Our nation's capital is at a crossroads. The path that you and I choose here today will affect us all. I need you to act on my behalf to ensure that our country's future is secured. My abilities to influence the world are limited at this time. I alone can only do so much. You, however, may come and go as you please. You have a greater degree of freedom. Perhaps it's best if I explain why things need to change, and why I'd like you to act on my behalf. Our land is ravaged by mutation. The war was so many years ago, and yet we still suffer from its effects. We cannot move forward until humanity can gain a solid foothold in the world. To do so, we must rid ourselves of the mutations that have plagued us for so long. These super mutants, ghouls, hideous creatures. I believe your father's work can do that in a way unlike any other. I was hoping you'd see it my way. If the water purifier can be activated, 
It can be used to distribute toxins that will eliminate any mutated creatures upon ingestion. The longer it runs, the cleaner the world becomes. I need you to see that it starts running and that the necessary modification is made. In front of you will be a vial of modified FEV virus. It can be inserted into the control console for the purifier. Doing so will inject it into the water supply, and the purifier will take care of the rest. You just need the code to activate the purifier. Simple, isn't it? Excellent. I am pleased to know that I can count on you. There isn't much time. I suggest you travel there immediately. Once you've taken the vial, you're free to go. I'll do what I can to help speed your exit. Certainly. I think it's a very good plan, frankly. I'm not often one to praise my own ideas, but it's a creative solution to a very serious problem. Anyone or anything that has been affected by mutation will be eliminated. You will likely be immune thanks to your upbringing in the vault. Likewise, the good people of the Enclave will be unaffected as well. I understand that you may have become sympathetic to certain individuals in your travels. Individuals this will eliminate. Please recognize that the fate of our entire country rests on this plan. Sacrifices must be made for the greater good. Ah, the forced evolutionary virus. Such a long and sordid history. The FEV in this vial is a far cry from what it was originally created to be. Yet, little of that matters now. What does matter is that the virus contained in that vial will cause the eradication of all mutations. great many years ago. The remnants of the government had a similar idea. I can only assume the plan failed, as I never heard word of its success. But the plan itself was sound. I made a few modifications, and with your help, I do believe it can work. There's a bright future ahead of us, my young friend. Is there anything else? Colonel Autumn, my trusted subordinates. I'm sure you've noticed that Colonel Autumn and I do not see eye to eye these days. Figuratively speaking, of course. The good Colonel and I disagree on how best to approach the problem of the wasteland. He feels my methods are too extreme. He's allowed his humanity to cloud his objectivity. And now that he is publicly countermanding my orders, I can no longer rely on him. And so, I turn to you. I hope that you are able to see the larger picture, to understand what's at stake. And of course, if you're successful, there's a place for you on the Enclave. Perhaps you could succeed the Colonel as my confidant. I'm afraid that's not possible. Not until you've taken the vial.
Hostiles neutralized. Recommend immediate repairs to primary systems to ensure continued operation. in your rescue to repay my debt to you. Yes, and the most fascinating one at that. <laughs> Whoa, this technology is amazing. Imagine the evil that can be eliminated with such tools. I saw your capture, and a little cleverness allowed me to follow your captors. <sighs> I only wish I could have arrived sooner to aid your escape. As I owe you my freedom, I felt it was only fair that I return the favor. After all, I know no one else in this world. My friend, I would be honored to follow a hero such as yourself. Shall we go? sit here, the more time they have to shore up their defenses. We should hit them sooner rather than later. We barely have the manpower to keep the Citadel fortified. We've been over this before, Sarah. So we just wait until they decide we're next on the list? If the Pride goes in now, we might have a chance. And if you fail, then what? The risk is not worth the reward. I agree. Without the Gek, the Purifier is useless to the Enclave anyway. They may give up before long. I don't like it. You don't have to like it, Sarah. You just have to follow orders. Yes, Father. So, you're back. We had feared both you and the Gek were lost. Were you successful? Excellent. With that, we hold the key to keeping the Enclave from controlling the Purifier. Then we must go at once. If you have any other information, tell me now before we mobilize. Any help you can give might save lives. I see. And where is this virus now? Just as well, no good could come from it. We need to decide on a course of action. Something must be done. If the Enclave has the Gek, there's nothing stopping them from starting the Purifier. They'll figure out the code eventually. I'm afraid you're right. We need to act now while we can. Send the Pride in. We can do it. We can win this. All right, Sarah. The Pride goes in. But I want them to have some extra firepower. Rothschild, is it ready? What? No, I, I mean, Lee and I have solved the power problems, but we've only barely finished diagnostic tests. So? It's not ready for field tests, let alone live fire situations. 
The weapons haven't been calibrated, the navigation detection system is offline. Rothschild enough. Can you make it work? Honestly? I don't know. I think we can scrape by, and I suppose if we can't, it won't matter in the long run anyway. Then it's decided. Sarah, you take the pride and use the robot as support. Take our friend here and secure that purifier. Yes, sir. Before we get started, I wanted to let you know that my father and I have been talking. The Pride and I have decided that after all you've survived, you've done enough to be an honorary member of Lion's Pride. So congratulations, membership comes with some privileges, including our power armor. You want the full suit or the recon armor? Sure thing. Hopefully, it'll give you a bit of an extra edge. Okay. So do you think you can hold it together for this? Me too. If you need a minute to collect yourself, now's the time to do it. Okay, don't be nervous. You'll have the whole pride backing you up, not to mention this giant tin can. Just stay safe until we reach the purifier. You're no good to us if you're dead. And don't let that thing step on you. Okay, we're going to go over it one more time. The pride is on me. The goal is Project Purity, but we can't get into the facility with those energy fields up. Rothschild and Lee say this robot should be able to take down the energy fields. So we're on fire support. We stay close to the thing, keep it clear, and get it to where it needs to go. Once the fields are down, we head straight for the facility. We'll use the robot to keep them occupied while we get inside and secure the control room. We need to move quickly before we lose the chance to surprise them. Get whatever supplies you don't already have and we'll meet in the Bailey. When we're done with this, everyone can have a nice cold glass of water on me. Let's move. All right, Rothschild, fire it up. Pride, move out!
Target acquired. Can't say I'm surprised. You and your ilk seem hell bent on destroying everything our government has worked to achieve. There's nothing to stop me from killing you this time. Let's end this. You don't have to. Just stand there. It'll be over quicker and might even be less painful for you. <laughs> Well, that takes care of that. By now, the Pride should be mopping up whatever opposition is left outside. Let's get this room secured. Dr. Lee, it's Sarah Lyons. I'm in the control room. We're both here. What's going on? Well, so much for celebrating. One of us is going to have to go in there and turn the damn thing on. And whoever does it isn't coming back out. Not exactly how I imagine going out, you know? So, what should we do? Draw straws? I wish that were true. Really, I do. But you heard Dr. Lee. We have to do this right now, or who knows how bad it'll be. One of us has to go in there. I'm not arguing, believe me. But one of us has to go in there now. We don't have time to stand around and talk about it. Who is it going to be? You're going to have to be quick about it. If the radiation is bad enough, you won't have much time. I suppose this is... good 
And so it was that the Lone Wanderer ventured forth from Vault 101, intent on discovering the fate of a father who had once sacrificed the future of humanity for that of his only child. The Capital Wasteland proved a cruel, inhospitable place, but the Lone Wanderer refused to surrender to the vices that had claimed so many others. The values passed on from father to child. Selflessness, compassion, honor, guided this noble soul through countless trials and triumphs. But it was not until the end of this long road that the Lone Wanderer learned the true meaning of that greatest of virtues sacrifice. Stepping into the irradiated control chamber of Project Purity, the child followed the example of the father, sacrificing life itself for the greater good of mankind. Thankfully, when selected by the sinister president to be his instrument of annihilation, the wanderer refused. Humanity, with all its flaws, was deemed worthy of preservation. The waters of life flowed at last, free and pure for any and all. The capital wasteland, at long last, was saved. So ends the story of the Lone Wanderer, who stepped through the great door of Vault 101 and into the annals of legend. But the tale of humanity will never come to a close. For the struggle of survival is a war without end. And war... War never changes.